Hello and welcome. Doing another speedrunning video today because that was a lot of fun last time. Today it's based on a problem from the FMWC All-Star Battle based on a slot machine game. So we've got five uh, reels that spin around. They've got 19 different symbols on each that rotate around. Um, and then you score based on whichever five are left at the top after it spins. Uh, so there are eight different symbols. They've got values from 10 to 70 and 100 for the diamond. The twist is that if there's a duplicate, then you multiply the scores for the duplicates together before you add them up. So here, for example, you've got three stars and two cherries, so you'd get star cubed, which would be 8,000 plus cherry squared, which would be 100. So you get 8,100 for that spin. Uh, the maximum score you can get if you get five diamonds in a row, uh, there are diamonds, yes, there are five diamonds, uh, is 10 billion points. Uh, so it's quite an aggressively skewed scoring system. Um, so similar to last time, I'm just going to dive on in and then uh, if I make it through, then I will explain what happened at the end. Uh, oh, sorry, one other thing to watch. Uh, my score is up here. Uh, so that should uh, should hopefully end up at a thousand at the end. Uh, and I've set myself a goal of trying to do this in three minutes. Um, that's faster than I've managed to do it in uh, in practicing it. I've practiced this a couple of times, um, but it's a, it's a stretch goal. <laughs> we'll see see how it goes. All right, having said all that, three, two, one, let's go. So I'm going to name this, and I'm going to get rid of this, put it up here, plus, plus G, and I'm going to name this S, fill in the blanks, come down here, two, three, I'm going to say index S, one plus mod sum, uh, sum, it's 19, two, lock in the G, and take the same thing, come down here. This guy. First, we're going to convert these to numbers. G two zero. And we got to score them. So I'm going to say uh, Q dollar two to the power of count ifs. Q dollar two. And I'm going to say sum if this greater than one. Okay, let's take that. Copy it here. Put it down. Then let's take the same thing, copy it here. Oops, but this time we just need to update the first piece. Ugh. Not going great. Okay, index S, one plus mod, this, 19, two times. Uh, and we, do we get a 1,010? We do, so now let's... Oops, put those values in. Score goes up to 640, that's good. And then I want to take just this piece, put it over here, plus plus G, and say example five, and I'm going to say wrap rows X look of this in here, turning from here, five. It over here, fix that in a second so you can find five. But here I'm on index s one plus mod sum that lock 19.2 times this lock. Lock the three here, then let's copy this down. Uh, sequence I want 30 starting at 71. All right, so I didn't quite make it, but I'm actually pretty close. I might just finish this off. Uh, and bring this back over here. All right, well, that was probably more like 3 minutes and 15 seconds, but I'm going to declare that that's close enough because that was already pretty challenging. All right, so let's quickly walk through what happened here. 
um, first things first, uh, the first thing I did was just name some ranges. Uh, so control uh, alt F3 uh, to bring up the named range pop-up. And I just gave them as short names as I could. So I gave the list of gems the name G. Uh, and then I put a transpose of that up at the top here, which I used later on. I'll show you that in a second. Then I went over to the spins, selected the whole range, uh, including a column adjacent to each one of them, um, gave that the name S for spins. Uh, and then I used uh, control G for go to special uh, and selected the blanks. And that took me to just all these five empty columns next to these. And then I used a quick uh, VLOOKUP to look those up in the table of gems. Um, I'm, I like to make fun of the VLOOKUP haters, um, although I am warming to XLOOKUP, but in this case, uh, it's, it's a no-brainer from a speedrunning perspective because you only need one argument for VLOOKUP. Uh, for XLOOKUP, I would have either needed to name both of these or I would have needed to come over here twice and it would have been much slower. So that's the setup. Then we come down here. Uh, the, the sort of heart of all of this problem is using mod uh, to wrap the spins. So in other words, if I you know, if I spin from here, if I go one, it's there. If I go two, it's there. If I go three, it's there. But many of these numbers are bigger than 19. And so, you know, if I go 18, it gets me to there. If I go 19, it's the same as going zero. If I go 20, it's the same as going one and so on. Uh, and the, the mod function is easier way to think of it is like clock arithmetic. You know, if you say mod, uh, I don't know, seven times 19, uh, plus six, 19, it just takes away the seven times 19, gives you the remainder when you divide by 19, so that'll just give me six. So in this case, if I over here, I'll, the sum is just so that I could use the same formula for level one and level two, so I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, so I just take the 35 mod 19, it tells me I wanna go forward 16 spaces, I'm starting on space number one, because that's the way it's set up. So I take the 17th, and this hard-coded two here is just telling me, take the second column of that range, which is the column related to real number one, and that gives me my answer. Uh, and so then here I just have to plug that in there. Then for level two, we get three spins, uh, but the spins are sort of cumulative. So in other words, you know, this first spin of 17 takes you down to the 18th value, because again, you start on one. So then the second spin starts from 18. Uh, so it takes you three full uh, circles and gets you back to, uh, to number 12. And so that's where this sum came in. Again, I just, I put the sum in here where it doesn't make any difference. Um, but down here, it does make a difference. So we're, we're locking in the starting column, but not the ending column. So here it's just referencing that one, here it's referencing those two, and here it's referencing all three. So, you know, for the last one, you've spun all of these three mod 19. Uh, and then you just have to sum up those values and then get that back in over here, uh, which is what that does. Okay, and then level three and four, again, there's, you know, in thinking about speed running, it's very important to reuse as much as you can. And so what I have in both of these is I have five cells that work out the kind of gem value that you get. And then I have a block of cells that score those that I reuse for level three and four and five. So what does that look like? So in this case, I'm just, I just need to look up the, the gem symbols to get the gem values. Uh, so that's just a straight VLOOKUP in, in the named range called G, taken from the second column and zero for an exact match. And then here, uh, so rather than trying to score each one of these individually, it's more effective to score based on the gem. So in other words, how many diamonds are in here? One. So you get 100 to the power of one. So I'm counting how many diamonds are in here, and I'm raising 100, which is the score of a diamond, to that power. Uh, and because, um, because every gem has a different base value, uh, you know, if, if there were two different gems that scored 60, then you'd have to be more careful. You'd have to count the gems and then convert to scores and so on. But because the mapping of scores to gems is one to one, I can just do it this way. Uh, so that gives me, you know, 100 for the diamonds. Anything where there's no match will just give me a one. And so then I just, I basically need to sort of sum up these scores with a slight uh, adjustment. And the way that I do that is sum if. So I'm, I'm only summing the ones that are greater than one. Now, again, this is a, a slight kind of speedrunning hack here. In, in the real world, I would almost always use some ifs um, because, you know, that you don't always know when you're starting to write a formula if you'll want to add more conditions later. Um, but the advantage of some if, this is basically the equivalent of some ifs with uh, this range argument repeated twice. So you're saying some this range where this range meets this condition. But for some if, uh, the arguments are 
are put in differently and the sum range is optional. And if you leave it out, then it assumes that the range, the criteria range and the sum range are the same. So you can save whatever, a second, uh, by using sum if instead of sum ifs. So then I copy this whole block down to here. Uh, so for this one, rather than telling me, you know, these are the five gems, it tells me these are the five spins of the five reels. Uh, so I have to convert those to, to scores a different way. But then this whole block where I say, you know, how many hundreds, how many seventies, how many sixties, and then add up a score only counting the ones where it's, uh, where it's greater than one, that all stays exactly the same. And then this piece, I just say index on the named range of spins. Uh, and same as before, I just want to say mod the number that I've turned by 19 and add one to that because we start at position number one. And then uh, my column number is just two times the real number. And again, that's because uh, the second column of this relates to real number one. And then the fourth column relates to real number two. So in other words, you know, the columns one, three, five, seven, and nine are where the gems are. And columns two, four, six, eight, and 10 are where the score is related to those are. So I'm just looking up uh, score for this spin for this reel and that gives me those five values and then the rest of it behaves exactly the same as before uh, and you see here we do have one uh, one 10 billion score just to show that that works uh, and then finally for level five uh, we've got you know we've got 10 different turns and on each turn we spin all five reels and all these spins are cumulative exactly the same as they were in level whatever it was level two way up above um, so in this case it would be quite cumbersome. I could kind of build this model all out in a line with this, but I'd have like multiple 50 column blocks, which would get pretty cumbersome. So I decided it was safer to uh, to kind of rebuild it over here. So the, basically what I'm doing over here is I'm pulling in just one example at a time. So here I'm pulling in example five. I'm taking these 50 things and I'm wrapping them. So in other words, here's, so this is real one, two, three, four, and five, and this is spin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, and then I'm converting those to gems, exactly the same kind of formulas I used before. And then another time-saving tip. So this is one of the more complicated formulas. I didn't want to write it more than I had to. Uh, so what I did was I left a bunch of columns blank here so that I could put this in column Q, which is exactly where it appears uh, on this sheet. And so I just copied again, the same scoring block uh, put it over here. I put a transpose of the gems at the top because again, this is these are all referring to the the gem scores up in row two, uh, and that meant that as long as I put my scores in these five columns next to that, then I could just reuse all that logic. So that's what I did. Same kind of lookup logic there as before, uh, and then you sort of score each of those ten, you add them up, and then the final piece to get from you know here's one example back to here are thirty different answers. Uh, so, you know, if I put in, let's say 71 here, this would all spin around and it would tell me the answer for 71 is 102,780. But rather than kind of going getting each of those one at a time, I do a data table. Let's put that back to example five. I do a data table here where I say, what would this value be if I plugged each of these 30 values? And I've done a sequence of 30 numbers starting at 71. So it gives me the question numbers, which is 71 up to 100. What would this value be if I plugged each of these values into cell A1? Uh, and that gives me the answers. And then I just had to copy uh, and link paste them back in there. So I didn't quite make my <laughs> target three minutes this time, but uh, I think that was still, I think that was still pretty zippy. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to, you know, like and share and all that good stuff or not. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.